mental ways. Hey guys, welcome to Found Flicks. On this edition of Ending Explained, we will be looking at the horror thriller Get Out, written and directed by Jordan Peele. The movie makes some statements about the form that racism takes in modern society, but that's not what I'll be focusing on in this video, but I will touch on it a bit. I'll be delving into explaining the pretty wild ending, as well as detailing the important scenes along the way to put the whole story together. So let's get started with a quick rundown of where our story starts off. Chris and Rose are a mixed race couple, off for a weekend in the country to meet Rose's parents. Chris has some initial concerns about her family's reaction to his race, but she assures him that they are liberal-minded. So it seems like everything should be smooth sailing. And when they arrive, Chris is welcomed with open arms. But of course, the reality of the situation is much darker and sinister than they are letting on. Rose's family, the Armitages, have been luring African Americans here for years, and Chris was brought here for a specific purpose. Chris is, of course, completely oblivious to their intentions at this point. But then, something starts seeping into the conversations Chris has with the family. Basically, racist comments. And it starts to unravel the seemingly comfortable environment. It's nothing too severe as of yet, but still enough to warrant concern from Chris. Rose reassures him his thoughts are justified, but Chris is still on edge and goes outside for a cigarette where he has another strange encounter, this time with the two African-American caretakers of the family's home, Walter and Georgina. Walter appears from the darkness, running at Chris, only to turn away at the last second. And then he sees Georgina in the upstairs window, blankly primping herself in the reflection. There's definitely something weird going on with these two, which is illustrated in the very important scene that takes place after. Chris heads back inside and is surprised to see Rose's mom, Missy, waiting for him in the darkness. Earlier, they briefly discussed the idea of using hypnosis to help Chris stop smoking. He wasn't interested, but now gets coerced into a hypnosis session with Missy after talking to her about the death of his mother. When Chris was a child, his mother died in a room nearby, but he was paralyzed in place and unable to help her. It's this emotional raw nerve that Missy takes advantage of to hypnotize him. And now that he has been hypnotized, Missy has dominance over Chris's mind. This is represented by the concept of the sunken place where we see Chris floating helplessly in a dark void. Chris's personality has been repressed and is no longer in power. Above him, he can see Missy watching over him via a screen floating in the darkness, but he can't reach it. Again, this is because Missy is now in charge of Chris mentally, and she uses the tapping of her teacup as a trigger for the effect of the hypnosis. This is what we see going on with Georgina and Walter. They were both hypnotized at some point, and that explains their strange behavior. But there's still more to them specifically, but before we get to that, we'll need to explore more of the movie in detail. This hypnosis aspect is explored further as Chris meets the Armitage's other rich pals who show up for a big annual weekend at the house, and Chris is treated more like a curiosity than an actual person. It's pretty weird, but it's when he meets Andre, a sharply dressed African American, and the only other black person around, that things get really weird. Andre seems vacant and distant like Georgina and Walter, but Chris is more amused than scared of him. He takes a picture and when the camera flashes, Andre changes and freaks out on Chris, grabbing him and telling him to get out. So Andre has also been hypnotized into the sunken place and this is important as the camera flash acts as another trigger, causing the real Andre to suddenly return to the surface who warns Chris. That's who goes nuts, the real Andre buried within who has been repressed in his own body. But if he's not in charge of his body, then who is? We are so close to the answer, just bear with me folks, because we start to see in the party sequence with the Armitage's friends why Chris was brought here in the first place, and that ties into everything. All the people here are having an auction, and it's for Chris. Yep, that's right, it's pretty much a modern slave auction, and the highest bidder wins Chris. And what they want to do with him is pretty fucked up. The winner is Jim Hudson, a blind art dealer who knows of Chris for his keen eye as a photographer. And since Jim's eyes don't work so good anymore, he wants Chris's. So this annual event is for these people to gather here and bid on African Americans in order to put their brains into the black person's bodies that they auction off. Pretty crazy. And as for why they want black people specifically, here's where we get into what I think is the theme of the film. Them only taking black people is most likely due to their stereotypical beliefs that African Americans are simply better built for sports and all that other kind of stereotypical stuff. Essentially, they want a physically superior new body. But I don't think that they view this as racist. I believe these people are in fact genuine in their love of all things black culture. These are well-to-do liberal people that do respect and admire black culture, but only at a distance, not really interacting with it in their real lives. And that's kind of who this movie is actually about, this new kind of subculture that exists. People who are progressive, but they see black culture more as a novelty or an abstract ideal, not necessarily something real. 
This is not including all white people, obviously, but rather a particular subset, like I said, that is out there. Though the people in the movie take it to the extreme, they are so progressively not racist in their minds and so in love with black culture that they really want to be African Americans themselves. As they even say, it's fashionable to be black. But the flip side of that is they don't consider African Americans human enough to not capture them and do brain experiments on them. So there you go. And it turns out it's Rose's family that are behind the whole insane operation. We think that Rose is different than her family and on Chris's side for a large portion of the movie, but when they are about to leave, she pretends to not find the car keys revealing she has been part of the plan the whole time and Chris is taken for his operation by the family. And that it is Rose, well, and Jeremy as a medieval man, that have been luring black people to their home for the purpose of auctioning off their bodies. Rose's involvement is revealed in a series of photographs Chris finds showing Rose in relationships with other African Americans including Walter and Georgina. That's right, she at one point dated or knew both of them and brought them to serve an important purpose, to be the bodies for her dying grandparents. So it's Rose's grandparents' brains in Walter and Georgina's bodies. Walter and Georgina's personalities are still there, but buried deep in the sunken place. And it is her respective grandparents that are mentally in charge. But let's get back to Chris, because that helps explain the history of all this a little more. Chris wakes up strapped to a chair in a strange and ornate den, a TV sitting in front of him. Through the TV, Missy is able to use the teacup trigger to cause Chris to black out, but it's also through this that we see a strange infomercial-like video featuring the family. It kind of reminded me of something you'd find maybe in a forgotten Dharma base on Lost. Its host is Grandpa Armitage himself, at this point still alive, where he details a group called the Order of the Coagula. The Armitages and all their friends are part of this cult-like group that seeks to extend life through brain transplant experiments. He he informs us that there are three steps. Hypnosis, as in taking mental dominance over the body, but leaving the personality in there. Two is the process of explaining the surgery to them. Understanding helps with the surgical process. Then step three, the brain transplant itself. And the key to the whole process is the combination of hypnosis and neurosurgery, courtesy of Rose's parents themselves. It's also funny because it's mentioned that Grandpa Armitage placed in second to Jesse Owens decades ago in the Olympics, which he almost got over. And it must be this initial incident that led him into believing the idea of African Americans' physical superiority over whites that continues with the order to this day. Luckily, Chris is able to escape before his operation and brutally takes out Dean, Jeremy, and Missy, leaving only Rose left. The house now engulfed in flames, Chris makes it out, but before leaving runs into Georgina. Chris takes her with him, but again, he doesn't know that's actually grandma in there. She ends up crashing the car into a tree, leaving time for Rose and Walter slash grandpa to catch up to them. Rose is about to shoot Chris, but grandpa says he wants to do it himself. Then Chris remembers what happened with Andre and flashes grandpa with the camera. So just like we saw with Andre, this means that this trigger makes grandpa not in charge, but the original man who has been trapped in the sunken place. He turns the gun on Rose, shooting her, then turns it on himself to end the suffering that has become his life. Rose bleeds out on the road and Chris angrily strangles her for what she put him through, but then pulls himself away. Just then, lights flash behind them and we think it's the police, but it's actually Chris's friend Rod from the TSA that has been trying to find him. Hooray! So Chris does make it out in the end and he rides off in the car with his pal from the scene of the crime. We don't know where things will go from here, but Rod did get some evidence about the missing Andre. So they might be able to continue their investigation and take down other members of the order. Though it at least seems like their brain transplanting experiments are gone for good, since, you know, the whole family is dead. There you go, folks, the ending explained for Get Out. What did you think of the movie and its pretty crazy twists? Any other lingering questions you still have? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching Found Flicks. See you next time.